there, Griff Hamlin here. Welcome, thanks for joining me in today's video. I have got a new lick for you today. This one comes from good old box one of the minor pentatonic or minor blues scale. Now, uh, over the next several days, I'm actually going to be giving you licks from all five of the boxes. And this is uh, to kind of celebrate the launch of my new 50 Slow Blues Licks by the Box course. And we'll get more into that later. But for right now, let's talk about this lick. Let's talk about the box, all that good stuff. Most people are pretty familiar with yeah. box one. But just in case you're not, or uh, occasionally people will actually name it differently. So what I consider box one might, might not be the same thing that you're considering when you think of box one. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, starting at the A, the fifth fret on the sixth string, I'm going up five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. Some people think of it by fingers, first, fourth, first, third, first, third, first, third, first, fourth, first, fourth. You don't have to play it that way. Some people stretch their third finger out. You know, whatever's comfortable for you. We also have, don't forget, the blues variant. So uh, there's the sixth fret on the fifth string and the eighth fret on the second string, or third string, I'm sorry. And again, I suspect most people, I suspect we're on the same page with that one, but just in case, now you know. So let's take a look at this lick. Now, like I mentioned, it comes 100% from that box one area. And the reason that I chose to sort of organize these licks, as I'm gonna show you, by the box, is, you know, we learn the scales using these boxes, but we don't necessarily learn our licks that way. We tend to learn licks like, oh, I'm gonna learn a Stevie Ray Vaughan lick, or I'm gonna learn an Albert King lick. And, and then we sort of have to backpedal our way through that to figure out what box it comes from and sort of put it together. And a lot of times you find yourself, you know, kind of in some random place on the fretboard after you've finished something, and you might be like, Oh, well, I sure wish I knew something for box three because that's kind of where I find myself. And that's the sort of thing I'll say that actually happens. So for this instance, you uh, you would find yourself in box one and we're gonna start off with one of the most common moves ever. So this is gonna be beats four and duh. It starts as a pickup into the lick. And I'm gonna bend up the D, the seventh fret on the third string. And then I'm gonna strike the fifth fret on the second string and kind of roll back to the fifth fret on the first string. I wanna caution you against having both of those notes ring out at the same time. That's not really what we're going for. So try and get a little bit of a finger roll. Also, as you do the bend, it's very easy to just let go like that. Your right hand should be kind of laying on the strings so that when you let go, it will cover them up and make sure you don't get anything coming through. So as I strike that B string, I'm covering up everything up to the third string below it. So we have three and uh, four and uh, one and a. Uh. And that is a C and an A, the eighth and the fifth fret on the first string. Now you hear me counting. Please, 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 if you've never heard me say this before, please do what I do, say what I say, count out loud. It is very important. You don't necessarily have to know how to read this music, but you have to say what I say and do what I do, and you will get to the point where you probably will know exactly what those symbols mean. So again, three and uh, four and uh, one and a. Uh. Now what we're gonna do is on beat two, we're gonna hit the, um, the G, the eighth fret on the second string, pull off to the E, and we're gonna slide up to the blue note. I wanted to go ahead and get the blue note in there. We don't always use the blue note, but it's a nice touch. So what makes this work is this little grace note slide. So I'm gonna literally slide from the seventh to the eighth fret and then slide back. So it'll be like two and uh, three, and then I'm gonna pull off to the C. 
So that's the fifth fret on the third string. And down to the A. So this is the kind of thing you might want to pull apart just this little bit. Two and uh, three and uh, two and uh, three and uh, don't mess up like I did. Two and uh, three and uh, two and uh, three and uh, and then maybe add that to the part that you did before. Four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, right. So now it's coming together. We're gonna end that bar with just a quarter note on the C. So four and duh. That's nice and easy. And I've added just a little tail to this. One and duh, which is the A pulls off to G and comes back to the A. That, that little last section is one of those things where you may need that for your lick, you may not. You may have another lick that you want to go to. You may want to hold that seven for a nice long time. You may want to abandon it altogether, depending on what you want to do next. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So for now, let's just learn it as written. So if I count it out very slowly, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh. Now I realize that if you are, I'm gonna say counting a verse, <laughs> if you don't like counting, maybe you've never done it before, that's gonna seem kind of overwhelming. I encourage you, I will leave a link right next to this video to print out or to, to download the tab for the link. Print it out, write the count in there, okay? That is not cheating. That is not somehow a problem. That is not only amazing and wonderful, but exactly what you should do. If, you've, if you can't read those symbols, um, you, you have no idea what it means, you can't remember what the counts are supposed to be, write the counts over the tab and keep it handy. Okay, because you need to be able to do what I'm about to do, which is simply to count and play this. And I promise that there is a speed at which you can do that. I don't know what that speed is. It might be slower than I'm gonna go right now, and that's okay. But what you have to do right now is get to the point where you can play this and count it without looking at the paper. You have to get it memorized, otherwise you can't really practice it. Okay, so here's uh, here's me doing it. You can try it with me. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, one, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh. let's do it one more time one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh. And as a side note, one other thing that I should mention is if you want to be able to play this in different keys, right? This is obviously in A. We're playing the A minor blues scale. It's, it's useful for a blues in A. What if I want to do it in C? Right? I want to be able to move it around. Not only do you want to be able to play this by memory, you want to be able to play it without looking. It's the finger movements that you want to get going on, right? So as you play through something like this, right? Maybe close your eyes and just put it somewhere. Because the finger movements don't change, right? So that's kind of an important thing. Now, what you need to be able to do, like I said, is you need to be able to do exactly what I have done. Play this, count it slowly without looking at anything. Okay, the memorization is really, really important. It's something that gets ignored. 
but it is important, right? How are, how, you know, you would never, if you were going to go talk to somebody, you would never like keep words and phrases on a piece of paper so you knew what to say to your friend. It doesn't work that way. Playing guitar, just like talking. You're only going to say things that are built in, that are part of your vocabulary. So you really have to make this part of your vocabulary. Right now, now that we've got it, you want to get it to the point where you can play it with the backing track. You want to get it to about this speed. Now you may get it faster at some point. You may decide you want to get this up to like a shuffle tempo. Hey, that's great. But for right now, let's get it going with the backing track. It'll look like this. One. Two and uh, three and uh, four. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two, three and uh, four. So notice that I'm still counting out loud. Three and uh, four and uh, one, uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three. Also notice that it doesn't matter what chords are going on right now when I choose to play this because it's in the minor blue scale it fits over all of them four and a one a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and ultimately you want to get to the point where that's really easy it should be easy for you to do. Playing guitar is not supposed to be difficult. Okay, so continue to play that. Just play it along with the jam track. Do your best. Sometimes you might flub a little bit. That's okay. Count. Count out loud. If you can count out loud, I can promise that it will, it will come. If you positively can't keep up with the jam track, that's okay. Just turn the jam track off for a little while. Play it a few more times then turn the jam track back on. But always give it at least a few tries with the jam track, even if you can't keep up. It's a good reminder to your fingers and to your ear of what you're gonna expect from them, and I promise that will matter. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up for today, but be on the lookout. I'm gonna have more of these, like I said, over the next few days. We're gonna go through licks for all five boxes, again, in celebration of my 50 slow blues licks by the box course, where you'll actually get 10 complete licks in each of the five boxes. 10 times five is 50. Uh, plus I have for every single group of 10, there is a trading video where you trade back and forth with me. That's really great for your ear. Please make sure you do those. Uh, there's also a solo for each section and then there's even three extra additional bonus solos with licks going through all of the boxes. So you can really get a feel for how these different licks can go together. So of course, I'll leave a link near this video for you to check that new course out. It is on special this week to celebrate its release. And in the meantime, play this lick today. I will have a new one for you tomorrow, which will of course be in box two. So please check your email, come on back for that. Uh, downloads are also near this video. I have the jam track so you can practice with that and I will give you the tab to the lick again. If you need to print that out to, to write the countdown so that that helps you, then do it. 100% do it. All right. Thanks for joining me. Again, I'm Griff Hamlin. I'll see you soon. Take care.